We're back at SFA News Live. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about millennials, but before that, um, Layla Kasha um, is with me uh, from Grocery Outlet. She was on our retailer panel this morning. Thank you for doing that. It was you a know, blast. Thanks for having yeah, me. You, you, your insights were, were dead on. Um, and for those people that don't know Grocery Outlet, it is basically West Coast, a few stores in Pennsylvania, yep. soon to be national, uh, one, one of these days. Uh, but give us the top line of what is Grocery Outlet. So the way, the best way I can explain it is we are, if you think of Home Goods or TJ Maxx, we do that with food. So we save typically 40 to 70% off retail. We 70% of our business is about um, opportunistic buys. And then we also have about 30% of our business that's more of a everyday, you know, we carry these staple items every day. So when we talk about opportunistic buying, you know, your buyers are out there looking for great deals. Yes. Um, but the downside as a consumer is I could come into grocery outlet and see, you know, some great stuff and I'm back next week because I want to buy more and it, it, it's gone. Yeah, so we tell everybody, if you see something that you love, get as much of it as you can because it might not be here next week. Right. Uh, I think the great thing about that is our customers know that about what we do. It's an opportunistic buy. They're looking for that cool product, that on-trend product. Um, they want to be surprised by something they didn't know was out there. They discover it, they love it, and then they go to the the more mainline grocery store to, and they pay full price. So some, they're getting exposed to a lot of great product um, at a really reasonable price. And then what they love, they find again. So so what, what I really love, um, and, and for those of you that have never been to a, a grocery outlet before, um, you probably have all pictures that are totally wrong um, about totally what, wrong. what a grocery outlet is. So you've got produce department, you've got meats, you sell flowers, you sell, yes. you know, alcohol. Um, but also, as, as we're starting to see, and all the grocery outlets are actually independently owned stores. Um, and it's not like a franchise, it's a whole different model. So you've got a lot of families um, who own these stores. And also, there's a new store that just opened up in downtown Los Angeles uh, near me. Um, and I haven't been there yet, uh, but I've seen pictures of it. Wow, this is cool. This is this is like hip. This is this would be going to the hippest, newest food store wherever, um, and it's a grocery outlet. I love that you say that. So here's the funny story. That was I was at the company for two whole weeks when I designed the inside of that store. <laughs> so we kind of we looked at the building that it was going to be in. It's a mixed use building. There's and it's really downtown great Los Angeles. Downtown, yep. kind of this new. Um, they have a lot of like DTLA rising. There's a lot of really cool things happening. There's being gentrified, and so we really went in there and we kind of did like a, a one-off design. And it is really fun. It's really modern, clean lines, um, really fun. And the product that's in there is also being curated to follow that kind of downtown yeah. well, LA that's a, customer. It's a great job. So as we're talking about downtown LA. Um, as, especially for that store, I'm going to assume that um, most of their customers are millennials. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about millennials and and look through your lens of the millennial shopper. Uh, what I always say about millennials is that this is the generation that wakes up every morning and never wants to eat the same thing twice in their lifetime. Um, and, and that's the way I describe them. There's a lot of food companies who are focused on millennials. There's a lot of food companies who are not focused on millennials. And a lot of retailers are saying, you know, we we don't really care about millennials. So give us give us the 101 on millennials as they are today. So they should care about everyone should care about millennials. There's about 30 million millennials right now that are actually in the market. They're in buying the groceries. Yep. I mean they and and there's two distinct groups of millennials. There's the the foodie upscale millennial which is that younger maybe one or two uh, person in the household, but no kids yet. And then there's the upscale family millennial that is, they've got kids. The thing that connects them is they all want to eat organic. They all want these cool products. They all want to understand the experience of the food. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to eat it twice. You're right, right about that. But they also want to know everything they can know about the product that they're eating and what goes into the ingredients of those products. And they want to see that transparency of the whole chain of custody of that product. And so they're very interested in the story. And I think that's the thing right now for me as a marketer, is I wanna tell the story of Grocery Outlet, but with the millennial consumer, it's the story of every single item we carry. That's what they're obsessed with. And they 
once they know and love, they will talk, tweet, talk to everyone that they know. They're influencers in their circles, mm -hmm. right? That's what they love. They love to be in the know and they like to be the center Social of their media. circle. Yep. Absolutely. And so they are our biggest fans. When you look at our core customers, even though they don't represent, if you look at our total customer in general, they don't represent a huge number. They represent a large number of our raving fans, our advocates, our social media followers. They are a huge piece of that. So what's interesting for me, uh, when I look at millennials, um, yes, everything that, that we both said, but also both for millennials and Generation Z, uh, they're both very concerned about value. They yes. want a good deal, which is why, for example, Aldi uh, does so well with, mm -hmm. with the same market. Um, they want high quality. Absolutely. Uh, but they want it at a good price, and they're mm -hmm. willing to uh, change stores yes. for that price, uh, but quality is number one. Yes, and they're really portfolio shoppers. So they're like the first generation that grew up with that as the normal. Mm -hmm. So back in, you know, when we I first started working and you started working, we would shop one store. It was convenient, mm -hmm. we wanted to get in, we wanted to get out, we weren't so concerned about, you were more concerned about price, kind of, but really convenience was the right. driver. Right. For them, they grew up with their parents portfolio shopping, because around 2008 is when everything kind of started going wonky and people started saying, hey, if I go to three stores, I can really save money, a substantial and, amount and of money. And also discover new products. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it became the normal for them. So they've never considered, I'm just going to go to the corner market. They're right. going to go where the best story is. They're going to go where they get the best value. And value necessarily isn't always just price driven. It's no. a huge component, no. but they love. So for us, part of the story for millennials, they really, really love that we're independently owned and operated. They like the social consciousness feeling of, hey, they live in my neighborhood. I know them. They're, they're an independent grocery store they really really love the value of that and the service piece of that they it really resonates for them and so that's a huge piece of why I think we resonate with Millennials as well as we do so you've had a chance to walk around the show yes what did you see that was really cool and exciting. Oh, so I... And this is the first time you've ever this been. This is my first to the fancy time, food yes, show. to okay. the Fancy Food Show. And I live in San Francisco, and right. it's still the first time as New York oh, City. I know, isn't that crazy? San Francisco, I have yeah. to get in yeah. there. Uh, so I found a product yesterday that I am obsessed with, and I need to figure out, I just need to figure out where to go buy it. Um, it's called Mina's. Have you seen this? It's no. a Moroccan sauce. They've got a harissa sauce and a couple other um, flavors they're introducing, some stew, uh, some tandoori sauces. Phenomenal packaging marketer, yeah. but the taste was really incredible. Really, really incredible. So I'm really excited about that product. I'm gonna okay. have to get check and, that out. And th that's the only one you're excited about. Well, so I'm excited there's 2, about 2,900 exhibitors here. I know. Here. I know. There's so well, like there's always yeah. the ones that you know the tried and true. I told my yeah. husband when he came down here and I saw the big Faye booth. I'm like, oh, when I'm done, I'm gonna treat myself with a Faye yogurt. Well, uh, not to take anything away from them. Yes. But see the booth right here. Yes. Um, the the French yogurt. Yes. Try that instead. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And, and what they have, which is so interesting, in fact, we're gonna do a segment with them um, a little later. Um, it's expensive, it's, it's fabulous, but it actually comes like in a little crock that you oh. keep. It's not a plastic cup or a paper cup. Very cool. So yeah, go, go check that I'll out. I'll have to try that, I'm excited. Okay. okay. Thanks. We're gonna take a break. When we come back more at SFA News Live, watch us on Facebook Live, watch us on YouTube Live, watch us on the SFA website, watch us on the monitors throughout all of Javits Center. Just watch us come by and visit in person as well. We'll be right back. <laughs> 